I don't know how I, I contracted this thing. I can tell you for fact, if I was not, if I was not brought to hospital, I'd be dead. You know, that's the fact, that's the, the fact. Protect yourself, protect your people, protect your, your family, protect your friends, huh? protect yourself. First of all, I didn't bring this on myself. That's the first thing I understood. It could have happened. It was a matter of when, not if. So I knew that was just something that I had to take a step to, you know, um, I, I didn't put the blame on myself. I didn't put it on anyone else or where I got it from. Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Dennis Duke is my name. If you're new here, please make it a point to subscribe. But today, I wanted to encourage some people uh, that had actually lost hope. Uh, we understand different countries have taken different measures to curb the spread of this uh, disease that has taken the world by surprise. And uh, many countries, many economies are on a lockdown. Uh, they do not know what to do next. Uh, there has not been a proven uh, you know, vaccine yet. Uh, even the treatment is still scanty. There is still scanty information about it. But what I've brought you today is some sort of hope. I want to encourage you that actually there are people who have survived this particular illness, this particular disease. And therefore today, I'll just be very, 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 very simple. I'll be sharing some of the stories, but of course I'll be letting them speak for themselves so that maybe you can get encouraged, so that maybe you can get to know what exactly these guys or these people have been going through uh, while they were in that particular situation. So watch until the end because their stories are yet to inspire you to stay positive but also to stay safe if you haven't contracted the disease yet because very many people have been taking this disease very very lightly but maybe when you get to hear from a survivor explaining their you know their the, the, the kind of uh, misery they went through you'll definitely have to take precaution and take care of your lives again my name is dennis duke please watch this video until the end because there is a lot that you've got to learn from it until then it's a goodbye from me protect yourself protect your people protect your your family protect your friends huh? protect yourself i don't know how i, I contracted this thing huh? is it from the letters is it from uh, i don't know but I can tell you, come as your hospital, I'll be dead. I pray the living God. A lot of people are praying for me. I'll keep you updated. Please, 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 please. Mzizeme ata hii kitu ni ya China. Hii kitu ni ya kila mtu. They used to say Africans are always who are contracted. That's, that's stupidity. Hii kitu inamaliza hata wa Afrika. Inamaliza wazee. Inamaliza matajiri. Inamaliza maskini. Inamaliza gozi nyeupe nyeusi. Rangi yote. Eji yote. Kwa hivyo. Ile kitu nawambia Take precautions Musiseme hey, serikali sijui na tufungia If you can see <coughs> Developed countries kama France Kama Italy Kama America Kama Switzerland <coughs> Kama Luxembourg Kama Belgium Wamefunga mipaka Wamefunga kila kitu huh? Usiseme ni kitu ya kucheza. Hii sio mchezo. Eh? Akwambia if kama singe kwa hii ni oxygen. I'm now two and a half liters. Hii kitolewa. Uh, my condition inaenda chini. Lakini with the antibiotics which you can see here. I've met us everywhere. You see you now. Lakini, I appreciate your messages. I appreciate uh, your prayers. Asante sana. 
I'm feeling relatively better, <laughs> better than it was. And that is Indian in Manibeka. Indian in Manibeka, Ohio. First thing, and call the Ministry of Health. They will come for you and they will give you all the assistance you need. If you need any information from them, they will give it to you. And you should be ready to make um, sacrifices, such as being quarantined for any number of days. You should just be comfortable with that because this is something that we all have to make sacrifices as a country. We we'll all have to be painfully uncomfortable for a limited period of time so that we can save the future and so that we can save the people who are, there are people who are vulnerable. And it would be very, very selfish if you, you know, put yourself um, in a place where you are spreading it to other people. It's very selfish. So Ivy, how many days were you in quarantine as you are going through the treatment? I've been in quarantine for 22 days now. Yeah. And for that period, you were giving out contacts of the people that you had interacted with and the government was following up on them? Yeah, the government was following up on those people. And I was also asking those people, are you being followed up on? They were saying, yes, we are being called every day, every day. So those people were quarantined. And then after being quarantined for a number of days, they were tested. And then after being negative, they were released, but then still made to quarantine where they went to for another 14 days. I mean, the president has really commended you for cooperating with the government and saying that you are giving out these contacts, uh, contacts and uh, you are responding very well and very positively and you look like a very, very positive person. Uh, was, there a, was there a point when you were feeling as patient number one, perhaps you're responsible for infecting other people? Did these thoughts cross your mind? Um, first of all, I didn't bring this on myself. That's the first thing I understood. It could have happened. It was a matter of when, not if. So I knew that was just something that I had to take a step to, you know, um, I, I didn't put the blame on myself. I didn't put it on anyone else or where I got it from. That's something I did not do. But then I, um, that's why I took the step to make sure that I was isolated and treated so that it would spread that and suppress it for any other person who I had um, maybe been in contact with. And thankfully, because of that wise decision that I made, there was only one person who uh, contracted it from me. So had I not come forward, it could have been so many people, hundreds, and probably even to vulnerable people. So that's something you have to think about when you have this virus. I mean, Ivy, you're very bubbly. You're just, you know, a bubble of, you know, energy. What were you doing to, you know, uh, to keep you, you know, staying positive while, while you're in quarantine? What were you doing? Sometimes it can be a little um, overwhelming because, you know, during the day, you don't know sometimes it can be a little overwhelming but then for me i was i um i was talking to the doctor so they were advising me you can do this you can listen listen to music you can also uh, get audio books and try to stay away from um negative information there's a lot of information going out there in social on social media sites from sources that are not even uh, credible they are not scientific research journals or anything. That's the information you're supposed to stay away from. Keep positive and uh, talk to people who uplift your spirits. Is this the first day that now you're being released to go home? Yeah, we were just discharged uh, maybe a few hours ago. Then we came, that's when we came here. So how I haven't are you feeling? Gone home yet. I haven't gone home yet. But how are you feeling the thought of just going back home from all this? I'm excited. Because the last time I left, uh, the last time I was outside, everything was normal, right? So everything was normal. People were going to work, to school and everything. So now it's uh, things have changed from what I've seen on the media. So I'm excited to go in outside. You can't wait to go back to your normal. Yeah, I miss the sun so much. Yeah, we were, we were able to go out to the sun when we were in quarantine. But then, you know, there's that feeling of being able to really go out. Well, Brian is a bit overwhelmed uh, at this point in time. And just talk about the issue of stigma. Because there are a number of stories that are, you know, going out there of people who are being, uh, who are being suspected of uh, having symptoms of COVID-19. And there's the whole issue of stigma around them. How would you address that? What would you want to say now that you're going back to the community? Yeah. Uh, first of, 
I'd like to say I'm not afraid of stigma because I'm a person, first of all, I'm a person who doesn't stigmatize other people regardless. So I'm not afraid of the stigma because um, I know there are some people who might be scared. People are afraid of what they don't know. So the more information you get about this thing, the more you learn that people can actually get treated for this and managed very well then people, the stigma will go down. But there shouldn't be any stigma because this is something that is treatable, right? Yeah.